as long as you stay in the metaverse, I would argue and say, okay, this is not taxable income because you are in the metaverse. And once you take it out, like in the real world, you put it on your fiat bank account, then you should treat it like you would treat it also um, the traditional securities trading. Hi, Ali Reza. Welcome to another episode on Ledger Nation. Today, we're going to speak about regulation of NFTs, and I'm so excited to hear what you have to say about it. Hi, Maria. and Thank you for having me again. Very happy to talk to you about NFTs because it's very, I would say, yeah, on vogue. It's very, it's very hyped right now. And the regulation and taxation of NFTs is not really um, clear and transparent for the investors. Therefore, I think it's these are very interesting topics also for those who listen to this uh, today. Yeah, absolutely. So let's start right away, Ali Reza. Uh, can you maybe give us a little bit of overview? What regulation does currently exist in the NFT world? Yeah, that's a very interesting point because when, we, when it comes to regulation, we first have to understand what are NFTs. You, you, you see many tokens and coins which are called nfts but they are not nfts therefore it's important to understand what is an nft so an nft a non-fungible token um fungible this term comes actually from the security definition so in in the european uh, union or in the european economic area we have the markets and financial instruments directive where we have the uh, securities definition and one um yeah, one requirement to be to to qualify as a security under the European securities definition is the fungibility. So the financial instrument has to be fungible. Fungible means fungible means that the instrument has to be standardized and freely tradable. Standardized could be, for example, when you have a token, we have to look at the technological background of the blockchain. Let's say an ERC20, this is standardized, but the ERC721. Um, is actually not standardized. It's unique. It could be unique. And this is why we could then say, okay, once you have an instrument which is not standardized, then it is actually not fungible. So, and for, for being a fungible instrument, you need to have the standardization and the freely tradable requirement. But when you look at the, nowadays the NFT market, you have mostly NFTs where people want to trade. Therefore, the tradability is something where we cannot really argue and say the token is non-fungible. We always have to look at the standardization part and mostly at the technological part. Some also try to um, limit the standardization by having contractual uh, yeah, implica implications and stuff like that. But the easiest way of having a token being non-fungible is to limit the standardization and to have, for example, an ERC721 or some other blockchain um, technology, which is not that standardized. And then you can say it is, it is, not, it is a non-fungible token. Um, but uh, in, in non-legal or non-technical words, uh, a non-fungible token is something which is unique, which you cannot replace with the same token or the same coin. Um, and this is the first important part. So if we have a really a non-fungible token, then we fall outside of the existing regulation of financial instruments and securities, let's say securities under MIFID. So, and then usually we have nowadays not a regulation at all. If you look at Germany or at some jurisdictions within the European economic area, we do not have really regulation for NFTs. Um, and if you look at the European um, Union or the European Economic Area as a whole, uh, there is no regulation so far. From this year, we're most likely got going to have the markets and crypto assets regulation, which is a regulatory framework for crypto assets. But as I understand, because I'm also in the Mika task force, where we help to develop the Mika legal framework, uh, I understand that in the last update of the Mika, um, the, the NFTs were excluded voluntarily by the lawmakers of the Mika. So it is That's now written in the Mika. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is now written in the Mika that um, NFTs are excluded from the Mika with the argumentation that they are non-fungible, which means they're not really a high risk for the market and yeah. not for the investors. This is the idea behind it. Um, and that's why the NFTs are going to be most likely excluded out of the uh, Mika regulation. But if your NFT is, for example, a fractional NFT, an FNFT, then you have actually standardized NFTs. 
And then you can fall inside the MIFID regulation, so the Markets and Financial Instruments Directive. Yeah, so because there are now platforms that actually tokenize NFTs, so they fractionalize them and you can just sell them in little pieces. So that would fall into the regulation. Exactly. I mean, from a technological background, for those who are listening to this, who are like tech guys, you could have uh, ERC-721 and then take this ERC-721 and fractionalize it and produce lots of ERC-20s under it. And then the ERC-20 F NFTs are actually standardized NFTs, and then they may fall under the regulation of financial instruments uh, under MIFID. And um, I said it in the beginning a little bit um, yeah, cautious, because in Germany, we have a regulation of so-called investment assets. Investment assets in Germany are Vermögensanlagen, and we have a specific law, a specific German law, which regulates um, investment assets. So if you have an NFT, which you acquire for the sole purpose to selling it later for a higher price, then there's an investment purpose behind it. And if the seller or the minter of that NFT is developing a secondary market for trading of such NFTs, then um, this developer or minter may fall under the regulation of this um, investment assets. And then they may need to have a prospectus and they may need to have also for the secondary trading, for bringing the traders together um, like a brokerage um, license or at least some corporation partner, someone who is helping this um, developer of the NFTs and those who really build up an own secondary market to have such kind of license or we call it in Germany also tight agency agreement. And this is something what I face right now because I'm working a lot with German NFT developers together where they want to develop their own secondary market, mostly in an area of art, um, like classical art, but also music and other art where they and develop NFTs for the artists. They, they develop a market, something like OpenSea, you mean? Like they develop yes. something like this. Ah, okay, so yes. they do not develop the collection, they develop the market. They, they do both. They do ah, actually they do both. both. Okay. Because because when you look at from an economic perspective on the NFT market, like OpenSea or let's say uh, Mintbase, they they do the they do the profit because they offer the trading. The ones who develop the NFTs, they usually only get a benefit or some some reward for developing the NFTs. Except for those who put in a smart contract that they get participating yeah. in a in a further on trading, uh, but even this is difficult. So the easiest way from a from a developer perspective to have a business case, an economic business case with an NFT project is not just the minting and dropping the first time issuing of an NFT, but also to have the uh, trading secondary trading platform included. Um, we, we have this, for example, in Germany already with a startup based in Berlin, which is called Timeless Investments. They have fractionalized um, assets and they have um, token or coins which they, which they produce and they, they give the investors the opportunity to trade fractions and assets. And as the next drop, they're also going to have a crypto punk. So an NFT, and they're going to offer this crypto punk. Uh, they're going to buy that crypto punk and then offer that crypto punk fractionalized to investors mm -hmm. in Germany. And, and this, this is actually regulated. This is yeah, then regulated. Because here we have not a non fungible uh, token anymore, but a fungible token because it's tokenized. Yeah. And then you have the platform, the brokerage, where you sell the, uh, the tokens. Okay. Ex exactly. Exactly. I get it. So let's say I want to develop my own NFT collection without uh, developing a marketplace. Do I have to regulate something? Because actually when I develop a, an own NFT collection, I want to make money with it, right? So I create mm -hmm. it with the purpose to have an income from it. Yeah. So if you do like the issuing of NFTs for your own for your own profit. So you're the developer, you want to get the, the, the funds, the, the, the cash because you need it for some project and you're developing it for yourself. So you're not doing it for a third party mm -hmm. and you sell that NFTs. Usually you're not regulated, even if that NFT would be financial instrument, but now it comes, but if it's an 
if it would qualify as a financial instrument under MIFID or as an investment asset under the German Vermögensanlagengesetz, France actually has something similar, then you would need to have for the first issuance a documentation called prospectus. Yes, and this okay. prospectus would need to show to the regulator and uh, get the yeah, um, approval of that documentation, which is costly and time intensive. And it only makes sense if you plan to raise cash more than let's say 100,000 euro, 1 million euro, then you can invest such, um, yeah, such, such, such uh, monies to produce that documentation and to go to the regulator because for that you really need a lawyer and someone who helps you to produce something like that. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, another very important question is the taxation of the income that I generate. But let's now talk about not the income from selling the NFT, but rather something mm -hmm. like um, gaming. Uh, so in-game sales, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, we, we differentiate when it comes to taxation in several areas. I mean, I'm, myself, I'm not a tax advisor, or tax pro, but I have some solid understanding. So when it comes to taxation, first of all, it's important to understand that every jurisdiction like Germany, Austria, Portugal, they can regulate the taxation of crypto or, or crypto assets and trading with crypto assets or um, gaining revenues from crypto assets in a different manner. For instance, Austria just recently, I think a couple of weeks or months ago, changed their law and, um, and in the market, it sounded like that you do not pay any uh, taxes on crypto assets uh, transactions in Austria, which is not true because as you just said, we have to differentiate between um, the, the taxation you pay for trading and the taxation you pay, for instance, when you generate any revenue from your crypto assets. For instance, when you do staking or in your example, if you have some crypto assets and you do some in-game um, activities and you earn with pleasure. that crypto yeah. assets, yeah, you earn with that as a, um, yeah, transaction some, some, some revenue. So um, currently in, in Germany, uh, or let's say in most of the jurisdictions, they, this transaction could be um, could be treated like uh, labor work. So like you would work and gain money. So like it would be treated like you, you do some activities and you earn revenues. And then you would really need to look at the profit you do. And this profit could be a taxable profit as any other income you have. Um, but now it comes, but... Um, because it is very difficult when it comes to crypto, because you have crypto to crypto transactions, but you may also have crypto to fiat. And when it's, when it's crypto to crypto, so for those who are really heavily active with crypto, it doesn't really make sense to look at each activity and each um, crypto to crypto transaction and, and tax it. Therefore, some jurisdictions, for instance, Germany, they are thinking now of um, having a um, standardized taxation of crypto asset transactions, like a flat, like a flat sum of let's say 25%, but only if you take that crypto profits out and transfer it to fiat, so to your fiat account. So once you do that, you would actually pay like a 25% on the profits, but uh, this also has again a loophole or like an exemption which says if you hold your profits for duration of more than one year, you're tax free. And this is something which is now discussed with the German um, government and especially with the uh, finance department and those who are in charge for the taxation authorities. Uh, and this could be something which makes it easier when it comes to crypto, because actually it doesn't really make sense to treat crypto transactions and crypto activities the same as any other activity in the let's say real world um, and especially when it comes to gaming like you said um, if you like inside the game and you do some profits and you keep the profits inside the game it actually doesn't make sense to pay any uh, taxes because this is not really profits which you can use outside of the gaming world yeah it's um, not a realized profit in yeah. That sense. So, yeah. and if you if you apply this the same ideology to the coming metaverse, so let's say you're active in a metaverse and you have your crypto assets with which you do some 
activities in the metaverse. As long as you stay in the metaverse, I would argue and say, okay, this is not taxable income because you are in the metaverse. And once you take it out, like in the real world, you put it on your fiat bank account, then you should treat it like you would treat it also um, the traditional securities trading. Because if you do traditional securities trading, they also look like what, what profits you take out and you put on your fiat account and what profits you really use. And the rest, which is staying like in a, in a yeah, trading world, it is still inside it. And you didn't really generate any fiat profit. This year, especially in this year, in 2022, I think that at least in the European economic area, we will also see some harmonization of how to deal with taxation of crypto. Because otherwise, many companies now think of doing some taxation arbitrage, which means they are leaving, for example, Germany or some jurisdictions where they think it's not that crypto tax friendly and goes to some other jurisdictions. Another one is uh, uh, the Emirates, Dubai. I have uh, I have uh, contacts which went there because they're not getting taxed anyhow on their crypto income. Yeah. Uh, and this is something um, the jurisdictions which put like on their flag and say we are like a crypto and innovation friendly jurisdiction, they have to think about because regulation and taxation, it goes hand in hand. And once both is balanced and friendly uh, to crypto, then you can say, okay, this is a crypto or innovation friendly jurisdiction. Crypto paradise. Thank you so much, Alireza, for this overview of the taxation and the regulation in the NFTs market. It was very interesting. I think we, we covered a lot of topics. Sure. Thank you for having me.